So are you first years or second years? Seniors? Third years? Great. It's nice to see you. <laughs> So how many of you heard about the mathematics course before this course? Is it your first course for mathematics? Or? Good. Great. Yeah. So this course is the most basic course in the mathematics department. Yeah. So if you just can, if you know what the one plus one is it, then you are fine. <laughs> I really assure that, yeah. And maybe if you know what the two times three is, then yeah, you are also fine. So don't worry too much about it. <laughs> yeah. And make sure that two times three is not five, is six, right? And hello, people in the remote room. So do, do you hear me? If you hear me, then please say, you know. Uh, we hear you. Oh, great. Thank you, Victoria. No. Also, can you see the screen? Uh, yeah, you, you can see the screen, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried about you, but in the, yeah, in the remote room, can you see the screen? Yep. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Great. Yeah. So I need to bring the chatting room. Yeah. What I think in now is that maybe we have a two screens. So I just share one screen for the my lecture material and share one other screen for the chatting room and other your videos. But I don't know right not night. So I will figure it out next when we had a um, next class, but yeah, at this time, just, you know, use the same picture for both of the screens. So sorry about that. So it is so new <laughs> technology, so I didn't even know how to use right now. So I'll make sure that I need to use. And as all of you know, it is also my first time and your first time to doing a lecture simultaneously in person and broadcasting the lecture onto the yeah, remotely. So maybe I had a lot of mistakes and also you guys are also maybe some distracted for yeah, this kind of way because it is your, new to yourself, right? So in that case, if you have any trouble or if you have any question or if you have any, any concerns, then please let me know directly so that we can, uh, yeah, we can make it better class than before so we can overcome the COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, great. So okay, we have still four minutes. So.
that didn't last long. Could you, could you say something, Pinker? More louder, please. I didn't hear you. Okay, no, sorry. Yeah, maybe that's a typo. Can I? Okay, howdy. Howdy. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to see you all in once, so because I need to rotate it. But anyway, so my name is Jung Su Yu, and I'm your instructor of the record in West 167. So you can just call me Byung Su as my first name. You are fine. So, and welcome to this course. And today I have some announcement. Definitely, first announcement is my name. So please remember it. Yeah. And second announcement is about the class attendance. So yeah, actually there are lots of you have questions about the class attendance of this course. So as you know, this course will be operated via in-person and also via Zoom simultaneously, right? It means that if you just log into your Zoom session, then you can, <coughs> your attendance is recorded. And also if you just, uh, just be in this room here, then it is also recorded, recorded as your attendance, right? So you don't worry about your attendance if you are just uh, take, uh, take part in this course simultaneously. And however, I know that some of you has uh, some, you know, has uh, uh, illness or some has you know, some situation that you cannot take this course is simultaneously, right? So maybe especially for COVID-19, if you got, if you got such, such a disease, then maybe you had trouble to go in this room, right? right? So in that case, just try to take it, this course remotely, but if you are not able to take it in remotely, then just watch my record, uh, this video, right? However, I strongly encourage you to just participate in this course simultaneously because you paid a lot of money to university, right? But it is not for your watching YouTube, right? So 
if you didn't participate this course by yourself, then and just watching my watching the recorded video, then it is not that helpful for you to run something, right? So and also, uh, as I, uh, so also your your attendance does not hurt your grade. So if you just attend all the QGs and exams only, then you are fine to get 100% grade. But however, because of the university policy, I need to report your attendance to the university at the start of the semester and at the end of the semester. And it will affect your, uh, your standing on uh, scholarship or your you know, university standing. So I hope to see you all from now on to end of the semester simultaneously, right? But if you have any, yeah, any, any trouble to doesn't take uh, take this course in simultaneously, then please, yeah, uh, please consult with me before doing that, right? Okay. Do you have any question on class attendance? Good. Oh uh, uh, yeah, before going that, and uh, guys in the Zoom Zoom meeting. So if you have any question, then you can just you know, say something via your microphone, or also you can chat your, uh, uh, you, you can just chatting on this Zoom room, then I can see your chat, then I will uh, respond it to you, right? Okay, then next announcement is about the quiz. Oh. So as I said in earlier, we will have quiz today, right? But this is not, you know, technical quiz. So I didn't ask anything about the mathematics today, but I will just check two things. One thing is about how can we have an in-class quiz. So in uh, so today we will just test how can we have an in-class quiz during the lecture. So so the so I will just uh, direct, uh, uh, let you know how to use your BYOD, so your devices for quiz proctoring. And second of all, I just want you to know who you are, right? So these quizzes uh, con consist of some questions about the syllabus and some essay question about introducing yourself. So if you just click yes, 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 and if you just introduce yourself, then definitely you can get a perfect score, right? Okay, so that's today's quiz. So don't worry too much about the math. Okay, do you have any question on quiz? And yeah, and all other quizzes will be done in Thursday, the week we don't have exam, right? So since we have exam, three exams during the lecture week and one final exam in the last one, so we will have kids at least 12 times, right? And most of them will be done via in-class kids, but some of the kids uh, will be done as a take-home kids. But since this is the class for using innovative technology, so I will give you take-home kids and I want you to answer it not by your hands, but by your recorded video. So what you mean is that maybe I will give you some recommended problems in the textbook. Then you can just choose one of the problem and take video to solving that problem by yourself using your whiteboard or using your computer or whatever you want. But just record yourself to how to solve it, right? How, and just present it. Then maybe I also assess your videos and your peers also assess your videos and let you know that, yeah, uh, some feedbacks for your videos. So I, yeah, it will be done for quizzes maybe after two weeks. So, so maybe two thirds of the quiz will be in class and one third of the quiz will be videos. So please be prepared about the video lecture. So I think that if you have cell phone, then you can record yourself, right? So I think that there is no problem about technical difficulty, but please let me know if you have any question or difficulty on recording yourself on video, right? Okay, question. 
oh, taking video will be uh, increased homo, uh, uh, take home homo. So it will be take home quizzes. But there are take home quizzes or increased quizzes, right? So some of them will be increased quizzes, but some of them will be take home quizzes. In, yeah, today one is just increased quizzes. Then could you speak more loudly? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So, yeah, for the, your book, yeah. University's policies is just buy your book on your MSC, then that's why they have a textbook uh, shop on MSC, but in personally to buy your textbook more cheaper, I recommend you to buy it you, you know, in Amazon or anything else. Or you can get some electronic uh, version of your textbook. So I don't care about your text question. Yes, you need to buy, you need to purchase your web assign access to do your homework. But I've heard that just buying web assign homework is not them, not them, you know, expensive, right? So I think that the most uh, economical decision is just buy web assign purchases and get your textbook in other, uh, in other ways, right? And from the Alexis, are we allowed to use old edition of textbook? Yes, so you can use edition, ninth edition or 10th edition of the textbook, but eighth edition, I don't know what it is in eighth edition, so please just avoid eighth edition. But if you have ninth edition or tenth edition of your textbook, then you are fine. Do you have any other question? Textbook? Okay, great. And yes, so I will just write down here. For textbook, ninth edition and tenth edition, both are fine. And you need to purchase web assign. Web assign. access to do homework, right? Pardon? Uh, I don't know, I will announce it by email, yeah, after Googling, so, okay, thank you. Okay, do you have any other question? Okay, oh, oh sorry. Ah, uh, yes, so the homework, uh, the first due date of your homework is the August 26th. But however, if you have any trouble on making miss your due date, then please let me know, I'll extend it. And actually it is my policy for the homework. So yeah, maybe there are some professors in the mathematics department, which are very strict on your due date of homework but I'm not that professor. Actually, uh, I think that in my opinion, if you learn something from the mathematics course, then you know how to solve the problem, right? So what I want you to do is just try to follow your, uh, make your due date, but if you have any, you know, anything comes up so you cannot meet your due date, then please let me know you need more time, then I'll extend your time. But it doesn't mean that you need to just email me because before the first exam, then, hey, I didn't do anything from homework, so could you just extend it, everything? So maybe I can do it, but it doesn't have your grade or it doesn't have your knowledge, right? 
So please try to follow your due date as much as possible. And also, one more thing I want to emphasize that in the web assign access, you have three attempts to try to answer, right? So after three attempts, uh, if you just miss three times, then you don't have um, you don't have any other chance to make it through, right? So in that case, yes. If you still don't know how to solve it, then please ask me about the problems you didn't solve it, and please talk with me to learn how to solve your problems, right? And I will definitely uh, give you a chance to correct your answers. So please use me to learn how to solve your problems, right? So my objective is just by uh, interacting you and me, I will just want you to have the full credit on the homework part, at least, right? And in my previous teaching experience, actually I have only one year teaching experience, so it is not that good, but in my experience, students who finished their homework will, be ha will have the good grade on the exam, so we'll have good grades on the core course, right? So that's why I had this policy, right? So, and also, if you think that you are, you know, a little bit lost on this course, and first thing you need to do is just solve your homework in WebAssign again, right? And just let me know that, hey, I'm lost in this course, so I need to review some of the homework. So could you help me then? I will definitely extend your homework due date. Also, I will definitely want you to have to solve your problems with you, right? So please let me know if you have any question. And there are a lot of questions from the chat, so sorry. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, answer the question from the remote guys. So first question is from Emily. So the quiz will be located in eCampus. So I will show you where the quiz is located. So, okay, so just go to eCampus. When you go to eCampus, then maybe you can log in your Red ID. Yeah. And you can using the Geo mobile, then you can go to your courses. Then, yeah, you can go to one of the eCampus files. So here it doesn't say anything about the quiz, but Okay, maybe it's too All right. What? Sorry, give me a second. I don't understand why it happens, but. Okay, so can you see the course material in the eCampus? Yeah, here you have the quiz folders. So you have the quiz one, right? So, but it is not up here for you because I just said this one is hidden, but at least you can see the folders about the quiz, right? Good, is everybody good? Okay, so you, you, you can see the quizzes in here, but I don't know what happens in the 503 eCampus. Yeah, I don't understand why. Okay. Okay, so let's deal with it later. Okay, and from Amon, yeah, you've ordered your book from MSC Bookstore and it says it on its back order. So when will it be that by? So actually, yeah, you will need your uh, textbook. Maybe when, when you do the video uh, 
taking video quiz. So what I mean is in take on quiz and it will be held on after two weeks. So if you just get your textbook in two weeks, then you are fine, right? And also Lauren says that the quiz yeah, will be in the eCampus. And from Angela says that, could you repeat the question being asked by students? Ah, oh, okay, I will definitely repeat the question. So I don't, yeah, I just directly answered the question. So, okay, I will repeat the question. And it's the most of the class information has on eCampus. It, is, it will be on eCampus. So the reason I need, I didn't use the eCampus is because, yeah, actually, or yeah, it this course is just one of the service course. So it will be uh, directed by the department and the department just want, you to, want, want, want me to use the eCampus instead of Canvas. So that's why I use it. But maybe next semester we can use the Canvas, right? And okay, got it. So, so all the class information is, will be updated on eCampus. Do you have any other question? Yeah. One problem of this room is that I need to rotate to see all of you. <laughs> yeah, but please let me know. So yeah, first this in this course, please interrupt me. If you see that, yeah, when I lost you, then please interrupt me to, yeah, let me know, right? Okay, got it. Oh, and the last one, so office hour, so there are office hour things. So actually in the uh, syllabus, I just said that it is Monday and Tuesday. Uh, no, not two, maybe three, two, oh, sorry, three, two. I don't, yeah, this pen doesn't work well, so, okay, great. Three to four thirty p.m., right? Definitely is not a.m., so, yeah, you, in this office hour, because of the university policy, I cannot meet you in person in the office hour, right? Instead, I will give you in the Zoom room for the office hour, so, yeah, if you have any question, just, uh, or if you just wanna try to solve homework with someone else, then just log in with this Zoom room and serve with me, right? So I'm definitely happy to help you for your serving homework or serving anything else. And also if you didn't make the time at this one, then yeah, please just email me or if you are too shy to say something in the Zoom room, please just email me. Then I can, we can have an appointment, right? In person, in person or Zoom, yeah, both are fine. Great. Yes. So, oh, I, oh, okay. Then one thing I need to make sure that actually, yeah, because of my schedule, Maybe Mondays will be changed, but I will let you know. So, because I also, I'm a graduate student, so I also take some courses and my professor wants to change their time on lectures. So that's why I say I need to change my officer, but I hope that it doesn't happen. But yeah, but let, let you know when it happens, right? Okay. Do you have any question of office hour? Ah, so the in Zoom address is the same in the office hour, I will use the, oh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, in the office hour, Zoom address is the same as the class Zoom address. Ah, that's my bad. Okay, let's check the, what we have in the chat. Okay. 
there are three questions in the chat. Okay. Yes, so homework is due to 26 and you have free access for 14 days for web assign, right? So you can see your web assign without purchasing at least 14 days, right? So you can do at least first homework on web assign. Okay, question. Could you speak over loud? Web assign, sorry, uh, could you one more time? Oh, yeah, okay, so no, actually your homework grade, uh, so what she, what her question is that is the grade on web assign will show up on eCampus or the grade on eCampus on show up on web assign, but all the grades will be show up on the eCampus except your homework. And at the end of the this semester, I will make the you know total score on your homework, and I will uh, I will uh, update it on the eCampus, right? But before doing that, if you have any question on your total grade or total average before the end of semester, then please let me know, right? I I will give you some grade calculator for your uh, calculation on grade, right? And do you have any other question? Okay, then let's start the lecture. Great. Okay, so, so first thing is about the something called urban services and it is about the oil circuit. So can you see these pictures with bridges, right? So these are actually uh, some city called Kennisburg. Now it is called Kaliningrad. So currently it is actually a city in the uh, Russia, but in before the maybe in 18th century, it is the city of the Prussia and oil uh, was lived there. Euler is one of the great mathematicians in the world. So, and everybody actually see those bridges and they want to do that to just visit every part, uh, every bridges only once, right? So they just wanna cross each of those bridges once and only once, right? So they try to serve it, but they failed, except when Euler gives some theorem about this, right? So we will, uh, we will deal with this. And this problem is important in the current uh, one. Okay. Oh, sorry, because before starting that, a calculator, oh yeah, I need to say about the calculator. So calculators, all calculators except your cell phone are fine, right? So every calculator is fine, but if your calculator, calculator has some, you know, good features like memory, then your calculator will be, memories are cleared before your exam, right? So, but usually just calculator from, you know, Amazon with $5 with only, you know, uh, adding addition and multiplication are done, is fine, right? Thank you. Okay. So, okay, got it. So what we will try to solve it that is uh, just visit every uh, bridges once and only once to cross every bridges, right? And this program is important in this uh, business because especially for thinking about the salesman, so the salesman wants to serve everything for you, right? About, for example, a calculator or something else. But they want to visit in you in most efficient way, right? Then try to minimize your cost about visiting every, every one of you and just serve everything. They need to figure out what is the best path for them to visit one of the, their customers, right? 
So this oil problem in the Kenningsberg bridges will be connected to the travel, uh, traveling seismic problem, uh, which is very, you know, um, business problem, right? So that's why we just want to uh, learn how to solve such a problem using graph, right? So first of all, to solve this problem, we can thinking it as a, uh, we can thinking it as a graph. So think about these bridges, right? So first of all, this, uh, this bridge gives us maybe at yeah, this point and this point, right? So maybe this called A and this one called B. And this bridge is also connecting B, B and C. So, and this bridge also connect A and B, right? And this uh, first bridge also connect B and C, right? and say this one as D, then C and D are connected via this bridge, and B and D are connected via this bridge. So here is two bridges, and lastly, A and D are connected via this bridge, right? So this problem of can you spec bridge turns out to be that, can you just throw the line without uh, putting up. So can you just visit every these bridges without, yeah, taking up your line, right? They're taking up your hands, right? So for example, my first trial is bad because I cannot use this bridge, right? But maybe try once again. So maybe you can travel from A to D, and D to C, and C to B, and B to A, but you can go back to A to B. But at this point, you need to go B to D, but also you need to go B to C, right? But if you just choose one of them, then you cannot choose the other, right? So it seems that it is almost impossible, so, right? So in this chapter, we will see that why this is impossible and how can we just solve such a problem, right? Okay, do you have any question on this example? Okay, great. So, oh, I missed one on last one. So, yeah, I will definitely share this note with you by uh, one, one note ring, right? So yeah, personally, I recommend you to write down on your own notes because if there are something to come up, but if you want, then just use the notes I write it at your study, right? So that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing we need to know is about the concept of graph. So graph is a collection of one or more points so from the given example, yeah. Yeah, from the given example, you can see that there are some points, A, B, C, D. So these points are called vertices. So vertices or vertex is the singular form, but vertices is plural form, right? So called vertices. And the connection between them called edges, right? So for example, in the given graph, so this graph, so, I don't know why this red one is not related, but okay. So this graph, so think about this graph first. So it has two vertices, say A and B, and one edges, right? So vertices 
uh, A and B, H is nothing but just line connecting A and B, right? Good. Yeah, that's great. Okay, then next one is about the rectangular. So how many vertices are here? Four, right? And how many edges are here? Four, right? Great. That's the prerequisite for this class. So as I said, if you can add something or multiply something, then you can follow this class. So say that there are four vertices, A, B, C, D, and four edges, right? Yeah, I do not want to use capital letter, but anyway. A, B, B, D, B, C, and C, A, right? And some other examples, uh, maybe you can use this kind of one. So, okay, A, B, C, D. So, as you can see, the third one and fourth one has the same number of the vertices and same number of the edges, right? But they are different, right? So it, for example, it has four vertices, A, B, C, D, and it has four edges, A to C, C to B, B to D, D to A, right? But it seems a little bit different, right? So when you're thinking about your graph, then you can imagine you can move your point into other, other side. So for example, in this case, just imagine that you can just pull out your point D, sorry, to go this side, right? Then your graph looks like here is A, and here is D, and here is C, here is B. So I just put out my D to the upper side and put out B into the lower side to get this graph, right? So can you figure out that the this graph with red lines are the same as the graph below the red lines. Are you okay with that? So what I did is just, so if you have some graph in here, then I just change D and B, right? So that I make the rectangular, right? So this rectangular is not the same as this one because, you know, in this one, there are no edges between A and B, right? But in this one, there is an edge between A and B, right? So they are same as your you know, shape, but as your graph, they are different because their vertices are not matches, right? Okay, great. Okay. Do you have any question on this? Great. That's the most difficult point in this lecture because, yeah, mathematics is nothing but about talking about what is the same and what is the difference, right? And so you can see that actually these two figures are, seems the same, but it is really different, right? So, and there are some links, so, uh, some talks from the remote guides that yeah, you can buy the textbook and have a digital version. Definitely you can, yeah, have a digital version, that's fine. And there are some groomy links will be send it for everyone for sharing. So, you know, because of copyright program, I personally do not recommend to do it, but that's your choice. So, yeah, please. So that's my advice. So, okay, so I will share this groomy ring for all of you guys in classroom. 
so that you can see it easily. So anyway, and next example is about the graph with one vertex and one edge, right? So this is also graph because it is nothing but your edge is just connected to A, right? So it is already, so this kind of edge we call loop, right? Because it's loop, right? And lastly, this is just a graph, right? So it is just graph with no edges, right? It has only one vertex, right? So this is just a graph. So everything with vertices or edges can be regarded as a graph, right? Okay. Do you have any question on this? Good, great. Then now let's deal with much more practical one. So here are maps about the highway. So I want to draw the graph of the interstate highways. Okay, sorry, I just move it to here. Highway connections between Oklahoma City, Dallas, Shirley Ford, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, and Baton Rouge. So let's figure out where those cities are in here. So Oklahoma City is here, right? Just drag one is good. So Oklahoma City is here and Dallas is here. That's the Dallas. And Shreffort is here. And Austin is here. We need to beat the Texas Austin, but anyway. So San Antonio is, yeah, it is here, but you know, he, here is the San Antonio, right? I'm not sure, but San Antonio is, is much more south, or south uh, in the south of the Austin, right? So maybe it's San Antonio and Houston is here. That's Houston and Baton Rouge is here, right? So if you just make the highway connections as a graph, then first of all, you can connect Oklahoma City with Dallas as this graph, and Dallas to Shreveport with this one, and Dallas to Austin, this one, Austin to San Antonio, San Antonio to Houston, and Houston to Baton Rouge, and uh, Dijon. So, Actually, yeah, it is directly related. So we can, oh, also Dallas to Houston has one more edges. So actually what you can draw is just Oklahoma City to Dallas and Dallas to Austin, Austin to San Antonio and Dallas to Houston and Baton Rouge and Shreve Ford, right? So here, we also learn to how to call it the two vertices are adjacent, which means that if they are connected by an edge, only one edge, right? So for example, this Oklahoma City and uh, Shreve Ford are connected by two edges, so they are not adjacent, right? However, Dallas and uh, Dallas and Shreveport can uh, connect it by one edge, so they are adjacent, right? So can you figure out that the edge from Houston to uh, or Baton Rouge are adjacent or not? 
it is adjacent, right? Because they are already connected by one edges. So say about the is San Antonio and Dallas are adjacent? No, right? Because they are just uh, connected via two edges, but not direct one edges, right? So it is not adjacent. So we say that two vertices are adjacent if they are connected by an edges, right? So these are simple application about how to make some information from the map to represent it as a graph, right? Okay. Do you have any question? So Dallas and Shreveport are adjacent. Yes, so because Dallas and Shreveport is connected by these edges, so Dallas and Shreveport is adjacent. Okay. Do you have any question? And from the Alexis, Alexis question about the nodes. And I said in earlier that the field on nodes will be uh, given to you via one, one not, uh, link. So don't worry about the field on nodes. Okay. Then let's deal with another a little bit difficult one. So here, for example, thinking about this kind of thing. So when you go from Oklahoma to Baton Rouge, maybe you can go via this way or, or go via this way, right? So you can go to Dallas first and you can go to directly Houston and go to Baton Rouge or you can go to Dallas uh, and you can go to Austin and San Antonio and go to Houston and Baton Rouge, right? If you want to just travel all the Texas, yeah, except the El Paso, but anyway. So, in that case, you can see that these are the passes you can work through, right? So in the graph, we also say that pass is the route that passes from a vertex to an adjacent vertex with each vertex using being adjacent to vertex to next vertex, right? So you can just work through your graph using your edges, right? So edges are like a road, and point uh, vertices are actually just kind of, you know, cities. So you can just walk through your uh, cities using your roads, right? So that's why we call it as a path, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any question? Yeah. Okay, and for Taylor, yeah. Taylor says that San Antonio and Dallas are not adjacent because Austin is between them. So yes, that's true because Austin is in between them. So they are not connected by one edge. So they are not adjacent. So from here, maybe you can find some passes from A to F for each graph. So for example, maybe for the first example, I can draw pass from A to B, go to E, to F, right? In that case, we can just represent this path as A, B, E, F, right? Is it good? Okay. So, and next, yeah, since it is a path, so you can just move around everything. So for example, you can from starting to A, you can go to B, you can go to E, but you can go to B again, and you can go to C, go to F, right? So it is also path, so it is also A, B, E, 
B, C, F, which means that you can reuse vertices in the path, right? Also, you can reuse the edges in the path. For example, you can go to A, go to B, go to E, go to D, go back to A again, then go to B, go to C, go to F, right? So in this case, okay, from A, go to B, go to E, D, A, B, C, F. So it's a little bit um, difficult, but as you can see, the edge between A and B are used twice, right? In one path, right? So path is nothing but just what where you, you walk, just walk through, right? Your, um, just your travel roadmap, right? Do you have any question on path? Okay, great. So there are some other uh, notations for those kind of thing. So using an edge more than once is called that heading. So as you can see, the path ABF doesn't have bad data heading, and also path ABBCF doesn't have bad headings, but path, the last one, has that heading, right? Which is AB, right? Mm -hmm. So it is that heading. And the path that uses every edges exactly once is on Euler path. So that is from the Kennisberg bridges because all of post serve to where, why Kennisberg bridges cannot be visited once and only once, right? So if such a path exists, it, then we call it as a oil path, right? And paths that end at the same vertex is started from is a circuit, right? So it is just circuit. Thinking about the racing circuit, which goes back again. So it is just a circuit. And lastly, a circuit. So it is kind of the go back to its side. But the circuit uses every edges exactly once. It's called order circuit, right? So for example, in the in this one, yeah, I just want to throw one more graph. So A, B, C. In this case, you can maybe starting from A, you can go to B and you can go to C, F, E, but go to B, so, and go back to E, and go back to D, and go back to A. Then it uses all the edges in the graph only once, right? And also, we just came back to A, but starting from A, right? So in this case, this path, A to B to C to F to E to B to E, but different one, here is different one. Different edges. And go to D to A is an example of order circuit. Can you figure it out or do you have any question? Is it good? Okay. Great. So the videos are examples of some graphs. Figure you can figure out the some passage or circuit or something else. So let's try to first one. 
I just want to classify the following sequence of vertices for graph of paths or circuit or all of paths or all of circuit or dead headed edges, right? So first one is from A, E, B, C, right? So starting from A, I just want to go to E, then I want to go to B. So maybe it is just equal to here or go to here, but it's up to your choice. Then go to C, right? Is it a path? Yes or no? Yes, right? Because it is still connected via edges, right? So it is path. Is it a circuit? No, right? Because it ended at C, but C is different with A, right? So it is definitely no. Is it an order path? Why is it not an order path? Great. So what is your name? Pardon? Oh, as Gray said, it doesn't contain every edges, right? So for example, it doesn't contain this one, it doesn't contain this one, it doesn't contain this one, right? So it is definitely not an all of paths. So, okay. so it is not an all of circuit because it is even not a circuit, right? And does it have a dead headed edges? No, right? Because there are no edges used twice, right? So it is no. Great, thank you for your participation. So let's do it another pass with the same graph. Now we are going to from E, go to D, and go to A, and go to E, and go to B, and go back to E again, right? So here, this one's first, second, third, and fourth and fifth, right? So is it a path? Yes, right? Because we use it all edges, right? So it is a path. Is it a circuit? Yes, because it starts with E and ends with E, right? Is it all the path? No, why? Why is it not all the path? Um, actually, it uses only one edges. Yeah, it, but yeah, but not every edges. For example, A, B, and B, C are not included, right? That's why we say that it is not on order pass. So because it is not on order pass, so it is not on order circuit, right? And does it contain dead edges? Yes. One no, it depends on your choice. So actually, this is a little bit an ambiguous notation for your path because from E to B, there are two choices of your path, right? Uh, actually, you can choose these edges or you can choose these edges, right? So for example, yes, yeah, so thinking about the path. E, B, E, then actually there are four possible passes. One pass is just go from E to B and go back to E using other edges, right? What the other one is, again, from go, oh, sorry. So in this case, this one is the first and this one is second. But in other way, you can just use the, you know, the circle one, then go straight in the last, right? And lastly, you can just go back and forth with using one edges, right? So you don't use the other edges, or you can just go back and forth using only one edges, but you don't use the other edges, right? So in the cases of these two, it is not 
that added, right? But in case of these two, it is it has that added edges, right? So in this one, your answer should be, it depends on your choice, right? So this has four possible ways to construct a path from given information. And it depends whether it is that added edges or not, it depends on your choice. Does it make sense? Good, okay. Great. Then let's deal with a little bit difficult one. So now here from A, we need to go to D. Oh, sorry, we need to go to D, not E. Go to D and E and again A, again B, go to E and B and C, right? So just let's make it clear that in this case, here B, B can be chosen with two different edges, right? Then is it path? Yes, because it uses only edges. So there are no jump from the point to point, right? Is it circuit? No, right? Because it starts with A but ends with C, right? So it's not a circuit. Is it an order path? Could you loud it? Great, yeah. Yes, because it uses every edges in the thread, right? Good. Is it an order circuit? No, right? Because it's not a circuit. And lastly, does it have a dead headed edges? At least in this choice of B and EB, no, right? So in no, but for specific choices, right? What we did is just choosing both edges, right? Not one edges. So again, maybe if you just choose using only one edges from BE, so you can just use the edges goes back and forth, then it cannot be an order path because you didn't use these edges. So it cannot be a circuit, right? But anyway, so this is another case. So I think that actually I forgot from the previous one, but it is not clearly shown. So that's my mistake, so sorry for that. But in this case, we are just thinking that this BB is using both edges, right? Do you have any question? Good, okay, then let's do one more example. So from starting with D, go to E and go to A and go to B and go to E and go to A again, right? Is it pass? Yes. Is it a circuit? No, right? Is it uh, a order path? No, because we don't use this edge, AD, these edges, right? So it's no. And definitely it is not an order circuit because it is not even a circuit. And does it contain dead edge edges? Yes, which is just AE, right? This is edit the edges, right? So far, so good, great. Okay, so maybe I will just leave these one exercises and I will update it after the class. So just try to solve it by yourself, but you know, yeah, then let me please have a question if you have any trouble, right? So, okay, great. So that's the, something we deal with. So the problem is actually we want to find an order circuit because we want to use every edges at once, right? So, 
Okay, so before going to second thing, there is a question from Isabella. So once we got to a stopping point, could you go back to up to definition 1.4 and the example above it? Okay, so I really want to go to back to definition 1.4. So I want to repeat again that if you use an edge more than one, it is called dead-headed edges or dead heading. So your graph is dead heading or and the uh, the edges twice to use are called dead headed edges. And a path that uses every edge exactly once is an order path. And a path that ends at the same vertex as it started from is a circuit. And a circuit that uses every edge exactly once is also called order circuit, right? Just review. And Does it answer your question, Isabella, or do you need? Oh, okay, great. Okay, then let's deal with uh, find, uh, how to find the Euler circuit. So to deal with Euler circuit, we need to learn one of the notation for the property of a graph. So it is called balance, balance, sorry for my English pronunciation. I didn't try to use V in my home country. So, but anyway, so balance or degree of a vertex is the number of edges at the vertex, right? So for example, yeah, for this point A, it has only one edge are connected in A, right? So in that case, degree of A or balance of A is just one, right? In B, so to make a difference, so maybe I can add one loop, right? What is the degree of V? How many of you think that is two? How many of you think that it is three? Actually, it is two because degree is defined by the number of edges at the vertex, right? So because it is loop, right? Loop is just only one edge, right? So degree of B is two. So if this number is odd, and the vertex is called odd balance. And if this number is even for all vertices, then the graph is called even balance, right? Right? And a loop, which I just draw here, is just an edge that connects the vertex to itself. And a loop counts twice towards the degree of vertex. Oh, I did a mistake. So in this case, degree is three. Sorry for my mistake. Sorry. So yeah, loop will be counts twice towards the de degree of vertex. So okay, sorry. Sorry for my mistake. Great. So and a simple graph contains no loop, right? So this is not a simple graph, right? Because it contains a loop, right? So, is it a simple or not? Pardon? Simple, right? Because it doesn't have loop, right? So if you just add this kind of thing, then it is now simple, right? So good. So it is just notation on one. So, and one thing you can count, actually that's the reason why we count loop twice, is that if you just sum all the degrees of your vertices, 
then the number of edges times two is just the number of degrees, right? So that's called D is equal to two E. So for example, yeah. If, if in this example, you have degree of A is one and degree of B is three, right? But then your degree D of your breath is one plus three, which is four, right? But if you're just thinking about the number of edges, then it is just two, right? One here, A to B, and the other one is just B to B, right? Then you can say that two times two is just four, right? So that's why D is equal to two times D, right? In this example. So, do you have any other questions? Great, then because of the time, we have to do quiz. So please bring your laptop on your uh, desk and also please, oh, okay, I don't know how to do, deal with this, but could you set your cameras so that can watch your laptop, right? So what I mean is that you can set your cameras using your backpack or something like that. So yeah, yeah, like yourself, yeah, watching yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And for people in the Zoom room, could you uh, turn on your camera and let me see your screens? Uh -huh. Oh, in that case, then could you just using your cell phone to to the exam uh, to take the quiz today? Okay. Us, us, uh, yourself and the screen. Yeah. So I know that it is a little bit difficult. So yes, yeah, so for example, I think that maybe you need uh, your backpack. So for example, sorry. So maybe you can take put in your backpack and stand your screen. Yeah, like this. So yeah, I know that this is my first time experience. So I don't know how to deal with this, but could you make it available? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, that's the, pro okay, question. So give me a second. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are possible to using Zoom on your screen, then you're fine. So just make sure that your Zoom uh, can see yourself on the video, right? Okay, good. Okay, so, okay, everybody. In so please, in, please uh, uh, go to the Zoom room and log into Zoom so that I can see yourself via Zoom. And... Pardon? Uh, so, sorry, just, uh, just connect with Zoom your laptop and using your cell phone, please record yourself. Yeah. Are you supposed to send me the recording? Are you supposed to send me the recording? No, what I mean is that. <clears throat> yes. I want to have a live session. There's a screen share button. So that's why we need a second device. So that's why yeah, we, I, I just asked you to use the demo to go with Zoom and let me watch your example. I'm sorry, I know it is very confusing, but please 
but please make your cell phone to be logged in here too and make available to me to swatch yourself and your laptop same time. Right. Someone's asking, are we introducing I ourselves? <laughs> I get confused very easily. This is not okay. I'm going to go get my phone in the hallway. Yeah, go for it. I don't know what we're doing. I know I'm very confused, but please make sure that um, try to make that your set one and the set one should be going to use the Zoom room. And also your cell phone can watch your side and your laptop. That's the thing of the screws. I know whether it works or not, but let's try it. Okay, so why is it on Zoom on our phone? Yeah, it is really in the camera. You can see that you're not showing up. It's not there. Okay, it's not there. Oh, it's recording. Yeah. I want to get a free book. Like a free PDF. I just, okay. <laughs> I just rented it from Amazon last night. <laughs> Uh, I'm a freshman. Okay, I'm a senior. And I can never, Really? I've never opened one. That's what we did in like the dual credit classes, and I got them. I, mean, like, I wouldn't use them. Oh my. Could you please mute your side for me? So it's collapsing. Then maybe this echo is not. Did he want us to press record on the Zoom? I will just make a video with your kid right now so you can see what you can do. So, yes, so you know right, what I want to say is that just turn on your camera. And adjust this so that you can uh, just step on watching yourself and your right So maybe you need to step on certain things on you. I um, yeah. I, oh, there's me. Were you able to get on and bust so, your phone? Well, and your actually, um, Were you able this, to get on and bust so your phone and your like laptop? This, maybe your laptop is here. Yeah. And maybe you can uh, just so you make sure we're not cheating. Okay. okay. But you have to get both yourself in the. <laughs> I know that he's very yeah. This should work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think that join Zoom twice. I'm still confused, it's fine. Okay, one thing I surely know is that it is impossible to get an in-class case, honestly. So <laughs> it's really need further, right? So okay, so let I will talk with my course coordinator about this. And in this thing today, just yeah, just when I use your Zoom. So so people in person just throw their case as usual. Right? Because we don't have any PDF material today. Sorry about that. Actually, I need to test it before then, but I didn't pick it. So, yes, so don't mute your Zoom, but first of case, guys, in your remote room, just serve your uh, pages without any you know, structure. So, you don't need to turn on your computer. Uh, computer. So, yeah, I try to think how to solve this kind of situation for you, but usually maybe if we cannot have some, you know, other devices for proctoring, then maybe we need to use uh, another method, like right? just take on pages or something else. So what you need to do exactly is just 
one of your cameras is fine or can just serve your cages in e campus right now. And after you serve you can e campus, then you can go. Sorry about the confusion. So we take it. Yeah, yeah, you can take it right now. Yes. You can take it right now meeting? using your laptop or your cell phone. You don't need a report. Yeah, you don't need to be called at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. So I found my phone. Pardon? It's in the MSC. <laughs> I, I luckily ran into the guy who oh, found no, you it. You don't need to stay. He gave it to somebody no, else, and then they apparently to took it to the lost and found. So I gotta go out to this. Yeah. Yeah. For person in the remote room, also you don't need to turn on your camera. Just serve your uh, cages. Yeah. And after serving more cages, then you can leave. And you can see that actually this case is nothing but yeah, just reading something and introducing yourself. So it doesn't take a lot of time. Could you, could you uh, log out and again, log in again? So that's what I have in the start of the class. So yeah, but, so I think the e-campus is already one stable. So could you just log out and log in again? Ah, you took it. So I don't know why it happened. So give me a second. Got it? Oh, great. The e campus, yeah, you can see the keys in e campus. Keys have no due date. I didn't set any due date for keys, so, but I just wanted to serve right now. And after serving our keys, then you can go. Yes, yeah, sorry for confusion for today. I expect that I can use the proctoring during the class, but it seems impressive, so I need to talk with my course coordinator. Okay, thank you very much for being here, and sorry for the confusion of the first class. <laughs> yeah, I definitely prepare more for next class. And if you have any question, please let me know. And sorry for people in the Zoom because I didn't react fast for your chats. So. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, e whiteboard will be used for your kids. So. Actually, scratch paper is not allowed for university. So actually, that's allowed for you know spring or summers. But at this time, because of the yeah, instead of scratch paper, you can use the whiteboard or you know scratch paper. Because of the uh, possible you know uh, sharing your scratch paper with other, uh, someone else. So yeah, actually, I also think that is a little bit silly, but yeah. <laughs> That, but that's for you. So, okay. Actually, yeah, it, it is just used for, you know, just uh, for the uh, program. So, yeah, yeah, just in person. So, okay, I just turn, on, turn off my recordings. Give me a second. Stop recording.